hello guys welcome to my youtube channel today i came with a very interesting case previous two cs with large isthmic fiber posterior wall there is a omental addition onto the right corneal part it was a very flimsy addition so i am doing a ratiolysis first so as to we can move the uterus and get a panoramic view you can see the bladder is densely adhered on the anterior part of the uterus we are now releasing the momentum from the uterus slowly step by step onto the avascular plane we are separating it from the avascular plane so we should not damage the bladder by quartry now we will see the accessibility of the uterus we will go posteriorly you can see large isthmic fibroid around 8 by 7 by 8 cm size it was a exophytic fibroid on the posterior wall of the uterus it was arising from the isthmus of the or the body of the uterus to the posterior direction and backward direction you can see there were multiple fibroids into the uterus the uterus size was around uh, 14 to 16 week size we will see afterwards onto the left cornu and onto the body there were three exophytic fibroids present so we will discuss today that what difficulties were faced by me during this laparoscopic hysterectomy was that uterus was not able to move more more overly posteriorly and this is the case of previous two cs so we need to separate the bladder by lateral window technique so we are not changing our steps first we are cutting cornwall structures starting with fallopian tube you can see the ovary is densely adhered to the bowel on the lateral part as we have not planned to remove the ovary we are not separating ovary from the bowel now we will separate the round ligament over end ligament and free the uterus from the left corneal structures so we were talking about what difficulties faced during this total laparoscopic hysterectomy that uterus is not mobilized in a such a direction as we want it for the dissection so we are separating the round ligament you can see the traction given by the assistant is very good so you can see the distance between the round ligament making a neck posteriorly and going po on the posterior fold of the peritoneum so this is a case of previous two cs multiple uterine fibroid which is exophytic in nature you can see posterior wall fibroid in the body part and also in the isthmic part as we are getting space posteriorly i wish to continue on posterior fold first because we are getting the space only so we are separating till uterosacral ligament on the left side here you can see the uterosacral ligament is taut and we will grab it and cut so we have completed the posterior fold dissection now the main task of tlh is bladder separation this is the case of previous two cs we will go later window technique in such cases so we will cut anteriorly uterovesical fold peritoneal fold very slowly you can see the distance between the lateral cornu part and to the cervical part we will see the distance between them so we are separating the fold peritoneal fold only
as we are separating fold we are getting good traction onto the uterus i am holding the bladder fold peritoneal fold with one maryland forceps and my assistant is grabbing the bladder so we are getting a good traction onto the uterus and we have separated the peritoneal fold from the uterus it is densely adhered there is no such demarcation line in this case we will go very slowly step by step because we do not wish to injure urinary bladder now we have completed the whole peritoneal fold anteriorly now we will cut opposite side corneal structures we have separated the round ligament we will do fallopian tube followed by ovarian ligament and we'll try to reach on posterior fold here you can see the large isthmic fibroid more towards right side so we are not getting a space onto the right side because the isthmus area is whole involved on the left side on the contrary because we have the two pods on the same side we have separated the posterior fold up to the uterosacral ligament we will try as much as we can go posteriorly and saving the uterine artery to injure here we will see the later window technique i am holding the fold with maryland forcep will find the uterine artery and pushing it posteriorly you can see we are doing blunt dissection you can see very tortuous uterine vessels on the same side and we will separating it from the uterus so as we are getting a space wide tough structure vertical going blood vessels it is nothing but cervix only so we are doing dissection with maryland and shearer so you can see very tortuous blood vessel beneath it we need to be very careful because if we injured it we will obscure our whole surgical field as you can see we have separated the uterine vessels and pushing it backward and we are getting a white tough structure holding with the maryland forcep and cutting it from the uterine end we will stay near the uterine end as much as possible so we could not injure the urinary bladder you can see the vertical going blood vessels it is nothing but the cervix only you can see the uterine vessels very tortuous very beautiful in this case by separating it from the later window technique our whole job is done you can see my maryland is going between the plane of the bladder and the uterus and we are separating it from the uterus by separating urinary bladder from the uterus our whole job is done 
now the job remaining is coagulating the uterine vasculature cutting it from the cervix and doing monopolar quadri and separating the uterus that's it so you can enjoy the whole video in speed thank you for watching my video
so we have separated on the both the side uterine vasculature cut it and we have made a pericervical ring demarcation also we will do monopolar cautery and separate the uterus this is the final product thank you for watching my video